All right, and we are recording. So, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, the uh, this is a three-part series. You don't necessarily have to go to all three, and you can jump into the middle if you want. But uh, the focus for today is sort of an overview of uh, AI in education, right? Uh, it's making big news. So here's, here's our agenda. We'll try to get through all this in the next hour. Um, uh, we're only going to really focus on generative AI tools and how they relate to assessment, uh, creating image and video for educational purposes, uh, lesson designing, and a couple of things that are just plain fun. All right. Um, if we've never met, hi, my name is David. There's a little bit about me uh, there on, on the screen there. And um, uh, while, you know, I kind of uh, set up our um, next few minutes here. Uh, in the chat, let me know uh, what are some ways that you've used AI in the past? And this will serve as our, uh, as our sign in here. So just go ahead and type in, or if you've never used it, go ahead and just say, like, I've never used it. I don't know what this is. It scares me, you know? Um, all right, and uh, so the purpose for today is to become familiar with AI tools that are available specifically for educational purposes. Um, uh, can, and the reason for this is to consider the capabilities and really the challenges that are uh, posed by using AI in uh, school settings. And then uh, we'll, we'll call it a success if you can take one of these tools and maybe use it in the next few days, or at least play around with it a little bit. All right. Um, just a quick shameless plug here. Uh, the focus of the next two sessions, whether you do them next uh, uh, in the next couple days or in the next uh, week, uh, or if you jump on next week, uh, part two is going to focus around AI proofing assessments. So, you know, and really it's, it, as we'll see, it's kind of, you know, a fool's errand to try to just eliminate it. So um, I, probably a better way of saying this would be AI resistant uh, assessments. So we'll, we'll look at that, including uh, AI detection tools and the, their capabilities. Um, and then part three will focus more on the practical side of how do we use all of these? And I'll give you some sample lessons and sample, um, uh, you know, prompts that we've used uh, or that I've used in, in recent days here. So, all right, thanks for sharing here. Um, you know, we've, we've got the, the whole spectrum here in the chat from like, I've never used it to some of you have used like, I, you know, like some of the tools that I'll, I'll be sharing here. Um, so cool. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, feel free to throw them on the chat there, um, you know, and we'll uh, or email me. Um, make sure to keep your mic muted for today. Um, it's just a lot of like sit and get stuff. So I'm just going to give you some some tools. And then on the side, if you want to go play with those tools and, and you know, by all means, going to you know, go ahead and do that. All right. Um, I'll be posting these on YouTube after um, uh, probably later this evening. And uh, so if you want to go back and catch up and, you know, review, this will be there. And I'll, I'll share the slides after also. All right. So, um, you know, one of the quotes that I've, I've heard that I really like is that second one, you know, that a robot will not replace you yet. Right. Uh, but a person using a robot might. Right. And so we'll uh, uh, kind of think of that. So, uh, you know, we can look at AI stuff as like uh, it's no big deal or the the other extreme where it's it's the end of the world. You know, mankind is doomed kind of thing. And I, I think we're somewhere in the middle. I mean, it's yeah, there's some dangers to, you know, it, plagiarism and things like that. But um, but it can also be kind of helpful. And I think 40 years ago, people were having the same debate over calculators in, in math classes. Now the math teachers are like kind of laughing at the English teachers, I think. That's, that's how I feel. But um, so uh, and, and last bit of text here before we jump into the actual tools is uh, uh, number two. There is what I kind of want to focus on. And so that's what we're going to look at is generative AI tools. And basically, in a, in, in a nutshell, what those are are uh, like autocomplete when you're texting, you know, like that kind of thing, only like on steroids. So it, it 
it will make sense and you can um, have, carry a conversation um, with it. And so that's, that's the, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the focus of what we're going to be uh, looking at. So let's, let's jump in and look at some of these tools, um, you know, and feel free to, you know, kind of start playing with them if you'd like uh, as, as we go on. So the, the big three, I think, that are uh, the large language model generative tools. In other, in other words, things that you can carry conversation with are, are these uh, ChatGPT, Quad, and Bard. Right, and we'll look at each of these um, in in that order. So first, ChatGPT. Back uh, a, a, about a year ago, um, they released ChatGPT three. We're we're on three point five on the free version. Four is the uh, one that you can pay for, and the um, the the really incredible thing about this was the um, amount of um, conversation that it can it can produce that actually makes sense, right? And you know, here's here's the the classic example. Oh, so you you can ask it, right? Like, hey, what can you do? So this is on their website. Uh, the company that uh, uh, runs it is uh, OpenAI, and how they explain themselves is that they've trained a model called ChatGPT that can interact in a conversational way. So it can carry a conversation that makes sense and it's original text. So it hasn't been uh, produced, right? It, it scours the internet to find uh, words that are most likely come after other words based on what has been fed to it, right? And then it, it, it can carry on a conversation with that. And it's, uh, it, it is actually pretty impressive if you try to you know, just have a conversation with this uh, this robot, right? Um, here's what it can do right now, right? Uh, it can gener generate content very fast. Uh, you can ask it for lists of things, and it scours the internet very quickly and produces a list. Um, it, it can produce uh, information in essay form, in a letter, in, you know, a, a set of check boxes. Um, it can answer basic facts, and it can help you brainstorm ideas. Um, what it cannot do, right, is uh, uh, replace human critical thinking. So it's not quite there, you know, I'm, I'm going to say yet, right? Um, and uh, it, it can grade essays for you, um, not always accurately, though. So, you know, so if you feed it a very specific uh, rubric uh, and then feed it a series of essays, it can give a score, uh, though it doesn't uh, necessarily um, uh, think like like a human might. Like it won't take some of the considerations you, you, you might, but it's kind of accurate, but not totally accurate. So because of that, um, you should, you know, fact check it, um, you know, it's, it's great for brainstorming and drafting and, you know, you are still the expert in, in, in the room, so to speak. Um, and it's great for just sparking discussion, maybe giving you ideas you may not have thought of or ideas that would have come to you after a, a really long time, right? It can take what you might have you, uh, taken you hours in, in, in just minutes. All right. Um, so here's an example of, uh, you know, those early thing I, I just tried as soon as they came out. I was like, I wonder if it could do this. And so I, I, I fed it a, a prompt that was something along the lines of uh, how is the character Macbeth in Shakespeare's play a tragic figure? And it spit out this thing that was like, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's, you know, that makes sense. Um, you know, at, at the college level, this would be like a B minus. In a 10th grade English class, you'd be like, wow, that's impressive, right? A little too impressive, Johnny. Why, you know, how'd you come up with this, right? Um, so it gives you that. Um, it can also uh, uh, imitate um, other um, uh, text, right? And so uh, I was teaching uh, health over summer this year, and uh, I asked it, to generate a song about the integu integumentary system in the style of Taylor Swift, and it and it did that, um, you know. And one of the students was like, "Oh, that that's actually just like this this one song." And I was like, "Oh, okay, great," you know. So, um, kind of interesting how we can um, imitate other um, uh, 
types of texts, right? And it understands song and it understands humor to, to a certain extent. So, so there's that. Um, there was a piece written in the Chronicle of Higher Ed. Um, it was it was published in May um, of of this year, and ChatGPT was released publicly for free in November. So, in just about six months, uh, you know this this article came up. The the op ed that uh, the the title of it you can see there. I'm a student. Uh, you have no idea how much we're using ChatGPT. This is a, a graduate student at a, at a university who, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, wrote this for uh, the Chronicle. And so, uh, the 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 gist of it uh, is that uh, he used it for some, uh, you know, naughty things like uh, cheating, like you know, you know, I'm not just going to call it that. Uh, uh, claimed it as his own and, and turned it in, but also used it to brainstorm, fed it a, uh, some information, and then asked for uh, ideas, and then gave it an essay that he wrote to a um, uh, proofread forum to get feedback and, you know, the, all these things. So some of the things, can't fault him for, some of the things were just, you know, plain cheating. But, um, uh, you know, and I share this uh, not to justify the, the, the naughty behavior, but uh, to show you that I think kids are using it way more than we, we know, all right? Um, so uh, rather than uh, running away from it, I think we should understand it to teach kids how to use it in a, in a responsible way, like any technology, all right? Um, so a uh, big question is, is it, is it actually safe, right? So this this was interesting. So this is on OpenAI's website. So the the company that uh, uh, runs it, uh, and uh, it's actually not meant for children under thirteen years of age, right? So um, you know if there's when you sign up, there's a thing that asks you, hey, are you thirteen? You can click yes or no. You know it doesn't try to verify, um, but uh, if you're between the ages of 13 and 18, you actually need parental consent. And again, parental consent is checking a box, right? So um, uh, when I tried this with my summer school students, uh, you know, I kind of I, I had given them an assignment where they had to go on to uh, ChatGPT, and um, some of them were like, "Hey, uh, should I ask my parents?" And I was like, "Oh." Yeah, you, you should, you know, can you can you email them or text them really quick and most, but the vast majority of the class already had an account set up. So, you know, it, it gives you, use that information however you want to use it. But, um, so why, why, what's so dangerous about it, right? Um, uh, the, well, because the internet is dangerous. It has uh, filters built in so that, uh, you know, you can't ask it, how, how do I make a bomb? It, it, it won't give you that, right? Or, uh, you know, if you ask it to produce hate speech, it won't do that either. Uh, but it's not foolproof. Um, there was this competition in Vegas a few months ago where um, all those big companies had put in a giant pot of money to see if any hackers could uh, break it, right? Break this and the other ones. And uh, you'd win a certain amount of money if you could have uh, one of these AI tools produce something that they didn't think it could so that they could uh, build better walls around there, right? And so, and you know, uh, I think several people won, so. Um, all right, The with that in mind, there's this other, uh, 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 AI tool called Claude, and this was uh, uh, the the company behind this one is called Anthropic, and it started from uh, folks who left OpenAI a while ago. So they had the you know that technology and that that background, and then produced uh, this right. And uh, their uh, their their focus with this one was to to create an ethical robot, right? And uh, if you ever saw Avengers Age of Ultron, remember like uh, the whole premise of the movie was this supercomputer AI guy that's, you know, evil looking, right? Uh, spent 10 seconds on the internet and decided that mankind needs to be eradicated. And it's probably an accurate, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, 
you know, uh, overview of uh, what what would happen if some some you know com supercomputer looked at the internet, right? Um, and so uh, Claude uh, decided that they should align their AI with ethics. And you know, what do we mean by ethics? Well, you know, whatever these programmers programmed into it. So it has this sort of sense of right and wrong. Um, but um, the 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 best thing about this one, I think, is this last thing. It can analyze multiple, not, not just one, but multiple PDFs, so you can feed it your, um, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, essays or, or whatever from a PDF, and it can read it for you. So uh, researchers have been using this one a lot, uh, because rather than just reading the abstract on, um, you know, uh, on research, they can read the abstract, then feed it the, uh, the PDF of this, uh, you know, large essay, and it can give you a summary of it, right? Um, and so, you know, rather than, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say in air quotes, waste time reading articles and, and essays that may not be uh, something you're looking for, uh, you know, this will give you a quick summary of it. Right. So that's that's kind of how it's been mostly used. But then it does all the same things that ChatGPT can do, but it's been fed data for an extra year than um, ChatGPT. So one of the limitations of ChatGPT is that all the information uh, that that the internet information stops at 2021. This one stops at 2022, but the paid version of ChatGPT. GPT-4 uh, is current, so there you go. Um, oh, and the other thing that this can do is it can debate. So you can ha carry on a conversation, not, not just carry on a conversation, but it can argue with you and it'll point back to uh, things that both you have said and that it has said in your conversation, which is, uh, I, th I think, pretty interesting. All right, uh, last but uh, maybe least, maybe not least, is Google's version of this, uh, which is called BARD. You know, and um, it, it's kind of funny because Google was kind of like cutting edge for so long and then it kind of got left behind with this, right? Or at least it felt that way. And so they kind of hurried up and, and um, released their version of uh, uh, a, a large language model called BARD. And uh, here's, here, you know, you might be thinking like, why, why don't we have this? You know, we have like the education, uh, you know, uh, accounts. And well, this is why, because it's not meant for children. And most of our um, users are, are children, right? Uh, though it is available uh, on any personal Google account. So if you go onto your Google account, uh, if it's not there yet, you can probably go into your settings and activate it, though I think it was, they may have prompted you already, hey, do you wanna use our AI Bard, right? So let's, uh, let's see what this one can do. So what about Bob? No, Bard, what about Bard? Yeah, so it, it, it works similarly where you could, ask it a, give it a prompt and it gives you a, 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 a uh, response, but it also has a Google it button down there, if you can see that. So it, um, um, so you can get the, the best of both worlds. So you get the generative AI um, response where, you know, it's uh, original text, but you also get the, um, um, the, you know, the, the power of Google, so a, a Google search as well, all right? Um, and it's built into Google Docs, which uh, is, is kind of different. And so I wanted to show you, so I'm gonna uh, stop presenting so that I can present a uh, my personal account here. Um, so I'm gonna present a window, all right, and give it a second here so you can see it. All right, so here is a Google Doc, right? Um, so you, uh, when I when you open up a Google Doc in a personal account, it'll have uh, these little um, buttons or uh, uh, chips, is what they call it, and you can click on the Help Me Write button, and you can type in something that you would want it to. Um, to write for you. And so it, it takes a few seconds to do that. So I took the liberty of doing it already. I, I asked it to create a letter introducing myself to uh, 
students of my 10th grade English class, and this is what it produced, everything except for the highlighted uh, paragraph there, right? So it, it produced that, and then I highlighted that, um, this paragraph, it, it didn't, it didn't norm, uh, originally talk about unicorns, um, but I clicked on this little glowing button here, and I said, uh, tone, uh, oh, uh, right here, I said, make it sound silly, right? And so it gave me this silly paragraph in this serious letter. And so, the, you know, one of the capabilities. Google Slides has a similar function. So while we're here in my personal account, I'll just show you what Google Slides can do. Um, so uh, here's just some text on a Google Slide. There's this new little button here that says, help me visualize. So you can click on that, and then I can uh, highlight text and um, you know it'll give me uh, images of that so the, you know uh, there's a panda working out at the gym or I can take the you know this one of an astronaut on the moon playing cards and uh, these images are not images from the internet they are produced they're original right so it takes information visual information from the internet and combines them and produces new images. So there's there's an image of a you know a astronaut playing cards on on the moon, and then you can uh, choose different types of uh, images. Canva has a very similar uh, feature also. All right. Okay. So uh, let's stop there and go back to our presentation here. Pardon the delay here. All right. All right. So we talked about um, how it's used in slides, right? Here's uh, more images of uh, astronaut on the moon playing cards. All right. So, uh, so those are the three big ones. Now, let, let, I'm going to give you a kind of lightning round series of other. Uh, tools that are out there that are maybe a little less uh, popular. So one is Poe, uh, Poe.com, and it's a uh, collection of different robots uh, powered by Claude and uh, uh, ChatGPT uh, that uh, have personalities, right? And so the uh, the popular one is you can have chat GPT basically, but it only responds like a pirate. So that's that one. My my favorite one is the roast master. So you can ask it whatever you want and it'll give you, you know, the answer, but it'll um, and it'll insult you as it's giving you an answer, which is kind of funny. Um, so, you know, that's, and then um, you can program your own too. So you can tell it to answer a certain way, give it information about yourself even, and it can be like a, your own personal chat, you know, bot. So, all right. So there's that one. Um, and then uh, all the education companies that were, already using or jumping on this bandwagon too and, and using uh, mostly things that are uh, powered by it, one of those three, either uh, Bard, Claude, or ChatGPT. Uh, quizzes is one of them. So it has this new uh, uh, AI beta thing. So you can go into quizzes and create a new quiz like you normally would. And um, uh, you can uh, take a video, yeah, so this was a, or a PDF. But my favorite one, or the thing that I think most people will be using, is this video one, right? Um, so you can copy and paste the video URL, paste it in there. Oh, whoops! And it'll produce a quiz based on the the video. So it'll uh, read the transcript of the video. So it has to be a video that has a transcript and it'll uh, produce a, a quiz based on that, like a multiple choice quiz. And then you can make adjustments and then you have like your regular quizzes, game show, like, and if you're not familiar with it, it's like a, a version of Kahoot. Um, so it's, it's very similar to Kahoot, all right? So there's, uh, there's that one. Uh, another very cool one is uh, Twee, right? And what this does is it reads uh, videos and, and PDFs. But uh, so for example, uh, you can do the same thing, copy and 
the uh, share URL of a YouTube video, paste it into the uh, search bar in Twi, and it can either give you a script to that YouTube video, so it doesn't have to have the transcripts, right? It'll listen to it and then produce a transcript for you. It can create questions from a YouTube video, so it can listen to the video and create open-ended or multiple choice questions, and they are editable by you also. Or it could create a summary of a YouTube video in case you're in a hurry and you want to try to find something that would be um, uh, appropriate in, in terms of content for your students, right? For um, uh, like subject matter content, then um, it can do that. But wait, there's a lot more that it can do. So here's, uh, you know, when you when you go in there, it does all those things. It can also create warm up questions or discussion questions based on the video. Right, uh, but it can also read and understand text, so it can do all of those things with a piece of text. So you can upload a a bit of your textbook or a an article in there, and it'll create um, summaries, multiple choice questions, discussions, true or false, um, uh, create three titles for a bit of uh, writing. So if you can't come up with a, a title, it'll suggest titles for you. Um, and then uh, if you're extra studious, or if you have students who are extra studious, or you could assign this to them, uh, they can create um, uh, practice prompts, right? So uh, vocabulary practice uh, using, uh, you know, a, a list of vocabulary words, a piece of text, or a video, so it'll extract important words that might be difficult, and you can tell it specifically what to look for, and it'll produce uh, different exercises for that. It also has grammar and uh, fluency practice as well, which is pretty cool. And then this uh, ideas for homework, I wasn't, I wasn't sure about those. Those are a little uh, more like recall-y kind of things, but good for studying, I suppose, right? All right. David? Yeah. Hi, good morning. Could I ask a question or two? Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay, so you were talking about Twee and how it can listen to YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, so I was um, experimenting with ChatGPT and I noticed that it actually didn't do well with like citing content from within a YouTube video. And I, I thought that maybe that was because it couldn't listen. So I don't think ChatGPT is capable of that yet. Do you know otherwise? Do you know anything about that? No, uh, but I, I know that um, you can add plugins, which is kind of like the Google extensions, to the paid version. So I don't know if you're using the paid version. I've never paid them money, so I don't, I've, I've never used uh, the, the paid one. But uh, I hear that there are extensions that'll do that with PDFs. So I'm assuming it could do that with um, videos that have transcripts. But I, I don't know about uh, just listening. Okay, it works thanks. with transcripts. Okay, so if you input the transcript, it will work. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. And then the um, the you said the how Google has some of these features built into where if you're in a document, you can ask it to produce certain text. But uh -huh. that's not on our students' account. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not. Okay. Luckily, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, just looking through here. Sorry, I wasn't keep paying attention to the uh, chat here. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Jeremy Johnson asked if we're, you're going to get a link to the recording of this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll upload it to to YouTube and cut out like any beginning and end, and you know. Uh, so yeah, we'll. You, you'll definitely get that. All right. Um, in case you uh, want to explore Twee more, I included a video um, that someone made that's, uh, I think it's eight minutes and pretty comprehensive. So I thought that was a good one. All right. Um, this is like fresh off the press to, um, you know, we're, a lot of uh, folks in our district are using Edpuzzle. It now has a teacher assist AI thing and so it does the same thing so uh, this was like the the i thought all these other things were going to put edpuzzle out of business if they didn't catch up on this but yeah now you can insert a um uh 
a, a video and you can use uh, teacher assistant and I'll come up with questions. The, the cool thing about Edpuzzle is that the questions that it, it, it generates are from other teachers who have made questions on this video, right? And so they're somewhat vetted already. So it won't create actual new content. Uh, but it searches and finds things that ha have already been used. And the more they're used, the more, you know, um, um, the, the more uh, likely it'll be um, given to you when you, when you push the button. Um, and uh, it, it now also has a uh, auto grading feature for open-ended questions. So it used to be that it could automatically grade multiple choice questions, but now um, as long as you feed it keywords, it'll be able to grade your um, uh, open-ended questions as well. And then you have the final say, so you can take a look at it and see if it was accurate or not and, and change the grade accordingly. All right. Um, another pretty great tool and um, uh, Elisa, this might uh, actually uh, pique your, your interest because it does, uh, my understanding is it does listen and uh, make things from uh, YouTube videos. And so you can feed it either a YouTube video, a link to a website, a document, or PDF, and it'll do all of those things that are on the screen, right? So it can create a slide deck for you. Um, and I actually had it. I have it. Yeah, here's a sample. So I uh, fed it a, um, a, a TED Ed video on uh, Greek tragedy, and uh, this is what it produced here. And so uh, some of the pictures didn't translate for whatever reason, and some are stretched out. But I don't know. And you know, the text was original, so that that's that was pretty cool. All right, then. So that, that one is Almanac. Uh, and it, there's a couple of slides on showing you how it produces this. So you, you enter the video uh, link in the first box, and then that second box is the text that it produces. So it gives you an outline of what the presentation will look like, right? And uh, again, I included a video here that it, that walks you through the whole uh, process if that's something you would like. And, and again, it's not just videos, it's your own documents. So if you have like a set of uh, information on a certain topic, you can feed it and then I'll make a presentation for you on it. All right. Um, another very similar one is Magic School. Um, and it does the same thing, only way more. It has way more options. So it doesn't just summarize videos, uh, uh, but it, it can uh, do questions from videos, create lesson plans, create unit plans around information. Um, and so uh, they uh, actually are, uh, their whole thing is like, we are trying to make uh, teacher burnout uh, you know, go away kind of thing. Like, so they have, they have a very narrow focus. So they're like, we want to help teachers and that's their, their, their sales pitch and, and they're free, you know? Um, so, so is Almanac by the way. Uh, but this is their warning that it gives you at, at, at you know, when you first sign up. Uh, and, and so it, it values you as the teacher, but um, wants you to be able to um, relax a little bit. So, and um, it, it, the know the limits uh, section there, it says that, you know, it, our AI's knowledge stops at 2021. Uh, that is kind of a hint that it uses chat GPT to produce its stuff. And so, you know, there, there you go. Um, and then again, uh, a video, if that interests you, you can, you can watch there. It's uh, pithy and uh, still pretty comprehensive. All right. Um, another one that's similar to all of these is uh, Diffit, uh, it, but it's it's again it has its its niche. And so what it does, it's kind of what uh, I think what attracted most of us to uh, Newzella a, a while ago that it can level texts. Well, this specializes in leveling text so you can feed it's uh a, you know a piece of reading you want for your students and it can uh, adjust the reading level on it um 
Uh, ChatGPT can do that for you as well. Though this one, you know, this is their specialty, and so you know, um, you know, it's 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 refined to be able to to do that. So they've um, they they probably use something like ChatGPT or Claude or Bard to create that, but they've given it specific parameters. You know, maybe Lexile information and things like that. So, so that that's that's what this one is. Uh, this one, I think. Um, is a uh, freemium so there is a, a free version and you might have to pay for um, uh, different versions I, I believe if I remember correctly uh, curapod is another one that's similar to that uh, the best way I could describe it is uh, uh, it, it does what nearpod does but with, with without having nearpod around and so you can uh, have uh, some sort of uh, information for students and you can click one of those buttons and it'll create um, uh, activities around your information using you know one of those um, you know so um, this one though I know it the, it's uh, uh, you have a limit so uh, you know there, see the little upgrade button there so um, this one uh, is, is freemium so you, you get a certain amount of free um, uh, uh, prompts. All right. Um, when when we talk about image uh, um, production, kind of like the Google Slides thing I showed you earlier, the 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 big name in this was Dolly, also um, uh, run by OpenAI. And uh, so uh, this one's not free, but here's an example of a bunch of images that it has produced that are original. So, you know, there's that. Um, but, you know, we don't want to pay money, right? So let's let's look at the uh, some of the free ones. We have a guest star over here that wants to make a cameo, I think. No? Okay. So... Uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, they're starting to be relevant again, I think, you know, uh, sorry, Microsoft, I, you know, but, uh, this, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, link here is Microsoft designer, right? So as it loads here, it's a little slow. Okay. So, uh, you can describe an image for it to produce you know, and it'll, it'll create it for you, right? Um, you can add your own media, so your own images, and it'll configure those images to um, like a flyer or an ad, um, you know, or a, a slide presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, of course, right? Um, so anyway, so, so there's uh, Microsoft Designer. Um, and, and that one is free. Uh, oh, uh, I, I asked it to make a uh, flyer for the August 9th conference, and that's all I said is a uh, flyer advertising a school-wide district symposium, et cetera, right? And uh, that's those are some of the samples it produced. Um, you know, we can we can talk about how uh, you know, like you know, we can criticize those images later, but you know, um, but anyway, there's that. All right, uh, Microsoft Word again. Uh, has this really cool feature and it's a, a feature as I understand uh, uh, that's embedded in all the education accounts so which which we have I don't know if you, if you knew that so this is their the online version of Microsoft Word um, so let me just show you what it what it looks like here so here's a bit of text um, this is uh, if you if you uh, recognize it it's the opening uh, of Pride and Prejudice so I just copied and pasted it you know from the internet so it's not original context uh, content by any means. Um, and so if you click on the view um, button up at the top, there's uh, this thing called immersive reader, if you can see that. So if you click on that, um, it does this thing where it'll read it to you. And I'm not sure if you'll hear it, but- uh, It is a truth play. universally acknowledged that a single- So I don't know if you heard that, but it's, uh, it's not robotic. It actually sounds pretty, human right when it, when it's reading so i think this can be very helpful for your students right um if uh, 
um, you know, they um, ha have dyslexia or uh, other uh, things that imp impair their ability to read text from your content. You can put it in a Microsoft Word document and have it read to them. But wait, there's more. So because it's an education account, if you click on the reading preferences, there's this thing called reading coach. Um, so this, uh, I, my understanding is not on um, uh, uh, your private uh, Microsoft 360 accounts, but if you turn it on, it changed that play button to a microphone here. And so now I can click on that and I can read through this. And so here, let me, let me just give you a little sample here. So, all right, start reading. Three, two, it is a truth universally acknowledged. Okay, so I uh, mispronounced acknowledged uh, on purpose. And so it gave me a, like an accuracy percentage and things like that. And then you can click on that and it'll give you ideas on how to- uh, Practice makes progress. Uh, yeah. So Select how to any practice. word to keep so growing gonna, your skills. I'm gonna go back over here. Okay. So, um, oh, wrong one. There you go. All right. So, um, you know, you can see the value in this in, in reading intervention classes, right? Where uh, you, know, you can have students practice reading and then it gives them uh, exercises to um, practice words that they had difficulty with. <clears throat> All right. And then I showed you that in the reading coach. All right, so uh, lightning round here to wrap us up here, so a few extras. Uh, Pictori does all of that stuff, but with video. So let me show you a, uh, a thing I, I made that took me um, maybe five minutes to make. And so um, I went on to ChatGPT and asked it to write me a script for a commercial that would last about three minutes about Antelope Valley teacher induction, right? So my day job, like I work with beginning teachers. That's all I did. So that's all I asked it to do. So it scoured the internet, probably found our website and used that. And it created um, a, a script. And then I fed that script to Pictori. And all I did was create project, inserted the script, and it produced this uh, film, right? So I'm just going to show you the first like few uh, minutes here, a uh, few seconds rather. It's going to take a minute to load, I believe here. All right, and so I, I purposely left the um, subtitles there so you could see what I told it to, to say. And so there's an opening shot of a teacher in front of a classroom full of students. Hey, that sounds accurate, right? That, that looks like it makes sense. Then a voiceover saying teaching can be tough, especially for new teachers. And then, but the Antelope Valley, to, oh, Antelope Valley is a desert. Let's find a desert. I think that might be Utah, but still, hey, you know, it was able to find that. So, um, you know, so that's just a, a, a quick sample there. But, um, oh, sorry, lost the presentation here. Let me get back to it. So um, creates videos in minutes, right? Um, so for video presentations, the students might, you know, you, you might give them specific things to look for and uh, feed into it. Or if you want to, you know, make something to impress your students, you know, you, you have this. Um, and then there's this extension, Monica. Uh, it's a Google extension, so I put it in my uh, uh, Chrome browser, and it does a few things. One of the uh, extra cool things it does is that it can produce a, a summary of a YouTube video. So I went in and uh, uh, looked for a video on what A through G requirements are, um, asked Monica here to summarize the video, and it gave me this. Problem with this one is that it's not free, and that was my one free sample. I'd Luckily, I took a screenshot of what it looked like. Um, so that part isn't free, but the, the other things it does, uh, let me go back. So the other things it does is uh, uh, it, when I do a Google search, like google.com and search for something, it produces you know my regular Google search 
and on the side it uses chat gpt to um you know uh produce you know uh, the the content that chat gpt would do also um so you know it, 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 more than anything i've just found it to be kind of helpful you know but anyway so there's that um uh so this has been a lot uh the the guy in the picture that's not ben the in between me and ben um is eric kurtz we met him at isti a few years ago and uh you know he bought his book and you know, he's a uh, very knowledgeable ed tech guy and he has this very exhaustive uh list of um ai for education collection and so the the link is there and when you get the presentation you can uh uh click on it and see some of uh the the things that i mean we haven't even scratched the surface on what's available um and he goes into it uh pretty pretty deeply so um as promised a, a couple of fun things so uh there's uh this one um uh i believe it's made by google actually not not, not too sure but uh um you can create uh original pieces of music based on famous composers you know so you can manipulate uh their you know notes and, and things like that so you know that one that one can be fun and then record it and it's an original piece of music inspired by bach you know um uh this one is super fun i didn't score that high but uh it's the freddy meter Right, so uh, this one is made by Google, and you, uh, all, you know, you just go onto the website and you choose a different Queen song, and it's basically karaoke, and you sing into your microphone, and then it rates uh, how well or how close to Freddie Mercury you are. That was not my score; it was not even that close. But uh, you know, that, I thought that was pretty fun uh, to to use. And so, going back to Eric Kurtz collections, we have a couple of minutes here um yeah so it'll bring you to his uh to his document and it just kind of goes on for 11 pages with different tools that are available with ideas and for most of the tools he offers ideas also um you know he was he was a math teacher and so he kind of has that that um spin on some of those things but and uh, uh here's some some highlights from him uh, some of the things we didn't really uh, touch on, but you have um, links to all of these other education-focused tools that are uh, available. Uh, and if you're going to join us for the third session, we're going to take deeper dives into a couple of these, right? And uh, you know, if you, I'll, I'll take requests too. If you've already signed up for those, and you will, you're like, hey, I really want to see Almanac use it. Just email me, and we'll, we'll make sure we we focus on whatever you uh, would prefer, all right? So um, without any further ado here, I'm gonna give you a link here in the chat so you can provide some feedback on today and uh, and get paid for your time also. So uh, it's gonna ask you for an, uh, for a code and it's uh, AI and then our the date 10-10-23. So AI 10, 10, 23 doesn't have to be um, uh, 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 case sensitive. So, all right. So with, uh, you know, we've got about uh, 12 minutes remaining here. So if you have any questions, happy to ans answer, take any of those questions. We'll look through the chat and see if uh, there's anything we didn't cover. And, uh, or if you want to take some time and play with one of these, you've got about 12 minutes here to, create an account and start playing, all right? Uh, but, it, you know, besides that, it, we're, we're done here. Have, have a wonderful Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Dan. Oh, thanks, Amanda. Thank you guys.